Okay, if everybody's ready, we'll uh, start up, call the uh, meeting to order of the Environment and Natural Areas Committee of the District of Machosan, April 17, and it's um, 8.50. I just want to start with a territorial acknowledgement to say that we are happy to be here on the uh, traditional territory of the Coast Salish people and the, particularly the Shannon Nation, our close neighbours. Um, we had an interesting meeting at MEASC uh, um, maybe a couple of weeks ago with the Shiano Ocean Resource Center people. Michael Campbell was there rep representing and three other members of the Ocean Resource Center um, and um, Fire Chief Dunlop was there as well. And it was quite a, you know, we're always learning things and it was just a lovely uh, greeting that uh, Michael Campbell gave us which was to say that Chief Chips had sent a group there um, to tell us that our concerns were their concerns and we are all one community. It was just a lovely um, sentiment and one that was much appreciated that evening. So with that, we have an agenda here and I wonder if there's any additions to the agenda or changes that people would like to see. Seeing none, we'll just uh, take the agenda as uh, presented. Um, public participation, would people, anybody like to um, say a word of public participation tonight? Eric White, 4290, which Chosen Road. Um, I know you guys are doing a lot already, um, so I would just like to throw this out there that uh, New York City has a rat problem, uh, and the Chosen has a rat problem. Uh, New York City has decided to deal with their rat problem in the same way that I think it should be possibly dealt with here in the Chosen, and that's by using dogs. They have, uh, <coughs> they get terriers, groups of people go out with their terriers at night and they hunt rats. And we have the Dogs of the Chosen Working Group and I think that in a long-term strategy if it was put forward to them that they could be using their animals, training them on a, a humane, though with dogs it can be a humane way of dealing with uh, uh, infestations of rodents. They were bred for this in the past, this is what many dogs they're bred for. Um, and I think one of the biggest parts about it is that if you're concerned about the humaneness of it, dogs are fantastically trainable in their ability not to harm things. Um, for instance, we had a dog on our property the other day, and it picked up one of our chickens and took off with it, and then it put down the chicken, and the chicken was absolutely fine, and it was astounding. Just the way the dog handled it, and then once it was done with it, it put it down. So you can teach your dog to catch the rabbit, bring it to you. You can put it you know, in a cage and take it to Wild Ark and feed it to the birds. And I think it's a, a win-win for the people, farmers, and the dogs. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Anyone else? I wrote this at like 20 past six tonight, and I think I was getting a little punchy. <laughs> I'm writing. Um, to support the uh, the your um, in sending the letter that Miask has provided for the spill response, and um, so I said I give my support 100% to the work being done by Miask in pulling the wool off Machosen's eyes about the potential disaster that could come from an oil spill off our coast, and I urge Council to send Miask's letter, which is well informed and well crafted. Please be strong, don't back down. There's so much at stake. And in case you missed it, and the Gold Stream Gazette for March 29th, it shows two exhilarated young First Nations girls, because they're going to learn to be deckhands. I know, that's great. And then if you turn to page A7 for the rest of the story, they're going to be deckhands on the tent boat that tugs oil tankers past our coast. And I realize this is delicate now, because uh, these are our neighbors, and they have jobs. I don't want oil tankers carrying bitumen past our coast, towed or otherwise. I also appreciate the significance of the jobs, and I trust Council to know best how to navigate this situation. We want to be good neighbors. We want to protect our coast. 
I trust that Miask has looked carefully at the risks and has cut through the arguments that don't hold water. We can't bury our heads in the tar sands. There's an obligation to be informed, speak up, and hold firm. Let's hope for support from the other municipalities. Go team, the chosen. Thank you, Beth. Any other participation? Well, thanks very much. Um, we'll, uh, I guess the next item on our agenda is adoption of minutes of the Environment and Natural Areas Committee meeting on March 13th. So moved for the adoption. Thank you. Councillor Shukin. Second. And seconded by Councillor Donaldson. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the motion. All in favor? Carried, thank you. Now we have receipt of minutes from the Environment Advisory Select Committee of March 28, 2023. Receipt. Thank you, Councillor Shukin. Second. And thank you, uh, Councillor Donaldson, for a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the question. All in favor? Great. Carried. Thank you. The next uh, item is receipt of minutes of the Environmental Advisory Select Committee meeting of April 5th, 2023. Move receipt. Thank you, Mayor Little. And seconded by second. Councilor Johnson. Thank you. Any discussion? Um, we call the question then. All in favor? Um, carried. Thank you. We have no business arising, and the reports will be my uh, councillor's update. So the first item I wanted to talk about was the climate plan, um, action plan being developed by Pinnis Sustainability. That's the consultant, the local firm that's been working on that for us. Um, they're the people who completed the Highlands um, Climate Action Plan some time back, and I believe that's why they were selected to work on our plan, uh, given it was another rural community. Of course, under the previous council, the focus was on greenhouse gas emissions, and um, uh, from which I its residents. I guess we all recall that um, the consultant's work was nearing completion when, when we were elected, and we um, delayed their work on the opinion survey that was going to go out because we wanted to... Um, I talked to them about climate adaptation in addition to greenhouse gas emission reductions. The, re the revised public survey went out with some adjustments to capture adaptation initiatives and thanks to everyone who took part. I think about 155 people responded and that they've been a consulting feeling that's a pretty good response. Um, apparently a lot of written comments and detailed concerns. Uh, which is hopeful. They, we did get a handful of emails of, um, from various residents concerned about a bias in the survey, lack of recognition of the rural nature of, of the chosen our community, um, also the nature of the information being collected and more. I've spoken to most who, who sent us emails or um, uh, let, sent us letters and I think they're all content now to hear what's coming next from the consultants. Um, and all of those emails and correspondence have been provided to Penna for inclusion in their analysis and development of a plan for us. Um, but to be clear, the survey that was done, and we'll hear from Penna Consulting in not too distant future, was an exercise, not a scientific sort of survey or anything like that, nor st things of statistical significance, but just basically get the temperature of the community. Are people concerned about climate? There are people in Michosa who aren't. Uh, who is and, and how many people are? Are they, how concerned are they? Are they ready to act? Are people interested in the district acting? You know, would they see us putting money towards this? You know, that kind of, that's the general um, idea of the survey, just to get that feeling from people in the community. So the last few weeks, the planner, um, Ms. Catherine Lization, and I met with Steve Roddick, the first time that I've met him. Um, it was a pleasure to talk with him on Zoom. And I think he gets uh, where we're coming from and what we need from a climate plan in terms of the unique perspective from Machosa being a different kind of a community than uh, say an urban center. Um, he'll be holding a workshop with council uh, from 2 to 4 p.m. on Tuesday, April 25th um, to provide some information to council on climate planning, 
uh, let us know about the survey responses and he'll be looking for some guidance from Council on specific actions and directions. But in order to provide another opportunity for public input, uh, Rick Braun is the chair of um, MEASC here tonight um, and myself have been talking about it and we've agreed that on the same day, Tuesday, April 25th, in the evening, um, we have a scheduled MEASC meeting. What we'd like to do is provide an opportunity for the public to come then from 7 to 9 p.m. to provide input. More or less uh, an open mic for to hear from people, not an evening of debate and, and arguing about, but more of a brainstorming for people who've got ideas to come and offer them. Not to take away from people who've already been working and put information to us earlier in the survey, but just to add uh, what, what might come. So we'll keep track of comments and and ideas that come forward and we'll provide that material to Mr. Roddick to um, have further consideration in terms of inclusion into the plan. Councillor Craig? Yes. Is it, is it, do you mind if I ask a few questions on this jump, or you? Jump right in. Okay. Um, thanks very much. And so questions about the early session on April 25th. Yeah. Um, are any sense of what we will have before the actual session, will we have like a draft of Pina's plan or will we have a draft of this, like uh, the report from the survey response? Um, I'm not, I could ask if, if he would provide that beforehand. Um, it won't be a draft plan, no. What he's doing, uh, there was a workshop previously with council that I didn't attend, but I understand the, the format was one where there's a presentation and then council provided feedback and ideas about what they were thinking. Uh, given the sort of the general outline of what a report might look like um, and then also provide f some feedback to everybody about what's happened in the survey, what ideas people had and what correspondence they received otherwise. So the notion is that uh, that discussion is largely one with council though rather than um, um, a discussion with public and sort of getting a feel for what do we think of things. I'll ask them though about what material they might provide beforehand yeah. uh, council should Thanks. Uh, sorry, a few more questions, Councillor. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it would be really great to get the survey and again some far in advance this week. I mean, it would be interesting to just get it again, as you say, a, a read on the, the temperature in the community. Um, and it's I'm just I'm trying to wrap my head around um, me ask holding the the um, session to get client uh, comments and input from the, the community. Um, in some ways, I'm not. Um, it was something I was expecting that the committee would do. Mm -hmm. I'm not opposed to me ask doing it. In some ways, it's actually better because uh, we won't have staff burdened with taking all the comments down. And if me ask can do that, all the better. Um, but any any sense of your thoughts on how that meeting will be structured and how we can actually make sure we capture public input. Certainly, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, when I was talking to Rick about this, I was proposing that it be an open mic for people to feel free to come and speak. And then we keep pretty good minutes at the MEASC uh, meetings. And so we would re basically uh, keep a list of all the different ideas and organize them according to there's going to be a number of strategic directions that um, um, uh, Steve Roddick will, from Penna Consulting will be providing to council earlier in the day and they will use those same ones to sort of guide the discussion and sort the ideas and things that, that come forward. Okay. Um, I would be perfectly fine like every advisory committee for council to come, but you'd be in the audience not sitting at the table in terms of the um, uh, information. So we wouldn't be constituting a council meeting, but rather having a meeting where people are simply coming to, to talk with us. But if people got some other ideas of how we might run that, it'd be um, all ears. Mayor Little. Yeah, thank you for this. Um, so regarding the um, the meeting from 2 to 4 on April 25th, is the public um, open to come to this or is this just for council? It's an open meeting. Okay, great. And then the meeting um, later in the night, it is a bit unusual uh, that me ask would be doing the public uh, engagement. Normally that is the role of the committee. Um, and unfortunately, I would have loved to have attended had I known about it, but I've already got a booking for that 
that evening, so I can't attend. So I would suggest that uh, the committee also hold some kind of an open house um, public uh, meeting where, um, so the uh, consultants only have a few hours between 4 p.m. and when this meeting starts at 7 to come back with, with uh, what they've presented and our feedback, I think it would be better that the committee hold um, some kind of public engagement. Um, uh, MIASC, of course, is, is uh, welcome to do that. It's just a bit unusual for an advisory committee to do that as opposed to uh, the committee. This is the committee that, that um, uh, should be sitting at the table for that. Well, thank you for that input. I suppose this is not particularly different from the working group on the buffer land where we're having a working group who's not council um, hearing from the public and taking the comments. So I guess I was feeding off of that idea, but I, I get your point that that's not typical, um, but, but that's how we were doing the other work, so I thought it fit well. Um, Councilor Dawson. Uh, just for clarity, so Mr. Roddick will be coming on Tuesday the 25th from two to four. That means he's open to the public. Uh, he's is he attending Mias that evening as well or no? No, I don't expect so. Okay. In other words, people make attend the afternoon session, hear the presentation, hear council's comments or not, and then attend in the evening. And we'd be presenting the basics. It's sort of just not dissimilar, I suppose, to a survey where you're you're putting some ideas out and saying, What do you think? And can you give us some ideas? And all I was attempting to do with this was to make sure there's another opportunity for people to come and talk. Give us some ideas. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Certainly. Um, uh, any sense, Councillor Gray, on where we are at with um, the resources that we have for payment to do its work? Are we? Are they going to? Do they have enough? Funding to provide a, a like a credible report after all this input, or are we kind of near the end of our building? Um, I think I think we're doing fairly well. I mean, I haven't worked with them before, and you know they're pretty close to finishing before we arrived on the scene in terms of just doing the last the check in with, um, or at least as far as I understand. So, um, but we've chosen to spend very little money on this. So this is like a fifteen thousand dollar investment compared to say our agricultural plan, which would be forty thousand dollars, would be a much more robust um, thing going on there. But I'm having talked to the, um, Mr. Roddick on the phone, having looked at the Highlands report, which this is kind of based on. I'm comfortable that we're going to come along and do okay. But there'll be always be more work to be done, right? So this is the beginning. We have no money in the budget to do much in the way of implementation of this plan. Um, so. We have a you know a whole budget cycle to think about what comes out of this, what's possible within our budget, and what isn't. But we've made specific decisions not to fund specific activities. So, you know how useful the plan will be, or how soon we can get going on some of the items in it. I'm not sure. There's an awful lot of work going on right now, and and with the fire department uh, that we know about in terms of mitigation and and um, um, issues around preparation for major fires. There's our pod emergency response um, groups, there's mm -hmm. other work like that, there's a culvert, uh, we're looking at the culverts apparently and have some survey already done of culverts, so that's helpful. I mean, we'll wait and see what comes from the report, but I'm interested to, to see how it comes together and if we need to do more afterwards, I'm open to doing that as well. Yeah. It won't be completely blank on greenhouse gas emissions, by the way. We're part of the CRD, just like the regional growth strategy we looked at earlier. We have responsibilities to report into the CRD for the bigger bigger issues and that kind of, um, those questions will arise naturally out of, out of the uh, earlier work that um, Penn has done and whatever more we received in the surveys. Great, sorry, just one follow-up. Um, the the concerns I had when I first saw Pena's work in from Highlands is it didn't, seem to really open that door for engaging the community. So I think the work that we've moved toward now, whether the survey or um, just even, again, hearing more from the community and keeping it open as a living document, um, I think that will pull us in a good, good frame as well. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. One thing that I'll endeavor to do um, tomorrow is get this up on the website, see if we can get some people on Facebook to put up some information, both about the, um, um, if it's um, proper, about the council meeting, so-called workshop, 
and then and then the evening meeting as well. See if we can get on some email list, and so make sure as many people know about this as possible. What I've come to learn um, in the short time that I've been a counselor is that a workshop doesn't really mean a workshop. It's a workshop means a meeting, and um, and the formality of that. So the whole idea was. Um, by involving me, ask us we can get a little bit looser here and have a meeting where we're hearing from the public throughout throughout the evening, um, which is a change. But um, and I understand different from the regular way w that we might work, but hopefully it'll be useful. The um, maybe I'll move from that if that's uh, okay to the next item on the agenda or on my um, council's update, which was tanker traffic risks. So just a little bit of background: we had, of course, received correspondence from Trans Mountain. Um, corporation who were asking us to comment environmental assessment office requirements of theirs about the um, behavior of bitumen and we, me as looked at that, uh, provided a pretty uh, complete report back to the Trans Mountain and laid out a number of concerns and our biggest concerns or some of our biggest concerns they basically said uh, it's not in scope for the environmental assessment office to learn about your concerns so as far as we know, they've just been put aside. We got a response and put them to one side. And so at MIAS, we took a look at that and thought more uh, about how we could raise really the most important issue of all um, with the province. And so we prepared the letter that you have before, you, before us tonight. And that's really for us to say, not back to Trans Mountain, because we've kind of gone that avenue. They were looking for input from coastal communities and from First Nation communities. We provide our input and they've said, well, thanks, but we're not as in, that interested. The key issue for us is that um, by looking at the weather that we normally have here, um, a lot of the spill response on the ocean can't take place because boats are not permitted to launch under Transport Canada rules uh, to go out there and, and deal with things. And it's dangerous, so they stay, they stay ashore. Um, and the effort with this letter is to let the province know hey, it's your environmental office. Um, they may not be looking at it, but minister, would you be interested? And so we laid out the, the letter, you can see, raising basically the issue that uh, we can't really get out there and respond about 40% of the time. And would it be possible, or would the province join in terms of talking to the federal government about maybe not sending the tankers out in terrible weather, or when terrible weather is predicted? Um, so that's what this is, and I wonder if others have comments or ideas or appreciate the letter or would like it changed or should we send it? Councillor Gray. Th Councillor Shukin. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I think the letter is, uh, is, is well done and again uh, great to have followed this debate as uh, complicated as it can be from time to time, especially reading uh, Trans Mountain's uh, small, small text in terms of their research that they've done. The, the only comment I would make on the letter is the third final paragraph that reads, as a consequence of this situation, we ask the province to seek Greenland Transport Canada that tankers not enter our nearby oceans when such conditions exist or are predicted during a time of transit. Now, I, I know I'm going to offend somebody, but I'm, I'm wondering, I just throw this out, I'm not, I'm not text can be... Yeah you know, adapted and moved around and whatever. But I, I feel like there's a there's a better ask there, or maybe a more, something that might actually, um, so what, what the current paragraph is actually calling is basically, it's, it's sort of an all or none thing. It's like when the wind is this high, tankers don't enter. I suspect that's not gonna be, uh, unless there's like clear mechanisms for that to be, ha for, for the entry into the Sailor Sea to be halted, I doubt it will be. But the thing that I was wondering about is, is asking if they can share their plan to manage the risks when such conditions arise. Or uh, to, 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 I don't know, to develop a plan or like, like pose a question as opposed to sort of a draw a line in the sand that it's easily stopped over. I, I mean, you might even incorporate the two, but um, Mm -hmm. or word it a little differently but but again just pose it as a challenge to them that's actually achievable and reasonable show us that we know this is a situation that's going to be problematic in terms of oil spill cleanup what's your plan to deal with the risk that's 
I like that. I might add, be added rather than uh, subtract. Sure. Um, yeah. the, the, the really the issue that we've got, well, I guess it's, you can see it in the letter. It's once they're out there, if there's if there's a problem in a storm, then we could be like mm -hmm. day after day after day waiting, and the oil just comes ashore. It's not. Yeah. We're kind of worried too. We're we're Miask is talking with um, uh, Fire Chief Dunlop and uh, Shiana First Nation about. Once the oil hits or the bitumen hits the shore, what do we do? Mm -hmm. And um, how might we actually manage the, this poisonous substance all over the all over the shoreline? It's quite problematic because you can't breathe the fumes, or that leads to big problems. So it's mm -hmm. a real, it would be a terrible disaster. But I, but I get your point about asking um, what ideas do they have? And yeah. And, and again, I, I think the main point is not to throw something that they just say, yeah, pose, yeah, yeah. challenge and question that it's too reasonable to ignore. So. Yeah, thank you. Mayor Little. Yeah, I agree uh, that that uh, uh, paragraph uh, gave me s some uh, cause for pause as well. Um, I just think that um, we are at risk of them dismissing the whole letter uh, based on that that one, and I think we're creeping into other jurisdictional boundaries, and I, I doubt whether they have the capacity or the appetite or the funding to monitor that, um, and I, I just think that they would they would dismiss us. So I, I would not be in favor of that uh, paragraph, but something more aligns with what um, Councillor Shukin had said. Um, and then also uh, uh, the part at the end for your interest, we're actively planning. This is a letter from Council. Uh, we're not meeting with uh, WCMRC, the MIAS group is, but I'd like to suggest that we ask the WCMRC to come back to Council um, in a month or two and present to Council and then we can actually say we have met with them. I think that would be a, a good idea. Thank you. Oh, and uh, sorry, a third thing. Mm -hmm. um, rather than um, in the fifth paragraph, one, two, three, one, two, three, fourth paragraph, um, where it says that any oil spill cleanup will be impossible, I would say difficult. Uh, we don't know whether it will be absolutely impossible. Um, I would say it's extremely difficult, but can we say it's impossible? Yes, we can. What we're saying is that the, the um, Transport Canada does not allow uh, for the for the response ships to go out when the wind speed is greater than 20 kilometers per hour and so we can say it's impossible on as long as that's going on so on a perfectly nice day which we had the other day you wouldn't even know the wind is blowing and when we had our MIAS meeting you can't get it you they weren't permitted to go out um, so it's basically much of 40 percent of the time you can't you just can't go out so it's not possible okay I mean, the reason why the letter says what it does about the tankers as well, the other paragraph is that that's actually our interest is to say, look, folks, are you not recognizing that it's, we can't get out in the water? You have Transport Canada on one side and you have, um, well, the um, WCMRC, which is um, an organization which is meant to be out there to try and deal with it. And, um, the problem so far, the Environmental Assessment Office is saying, well, we haven't picked up that, we're just not aware of that yet. So we're trying to let them be aware of the, of the situation that seems to be blind to it. But that's why we're bothering to write back or why Miask was saying, hey, let's write back. This is getting, this is kind of strange. We're in big, big trouble if a, if a tanker has problems out there. Um, one view on the committee is that if, if a tanker has trouble and it washes the shore, then we just evacuate the community the fumes are that bad. So we're trying to get across this message about the problems. But if we want to soften it and say, well, not so much, we're okay with it. This is more because we were asked to be involved. We've responded and they said it's not part of our, we're not going to look at it too much. We're just trying to go up a little bit higher in the organization to the minister and say, minister, I know it's part of your mandate in here somehow to, to get a look at this. Can you talk to your people about it? And it's not so much that the problems would be monitoring, it's more the problems would say, hey, we do have a problem here. This is not, by the way, counter to the provincial policy either. The province has taken the stand to use everything in their toolbox to 
change this situation. So it seems to me it would be okay to ask them to um, have a word with Transport Canada and see what can be done. But I'm at your service. I, you know, I'm I'm good with including the um, the the paragraph. I mean, it's um, I I do think the addition that I mentioned again, more carefully worded, might provoke some. Uh, yeah, I'd work with you on it a little bit if I might. Well, I, yeah, um, yeah, for sure. But. Okay. Mayor Little, are you okay if we leave this paragraph in as a consequence of the situation? Uh, Oh, sure. If if, if um, as long as you understand the risk that it might be dismissed based on that, and um, I'm just worried that it might come across in the wrong way. But um, no, if that's okay, if you want to include that, that'd be fine. Maybe um, as a consequence of this situation, um, um, as a uh, it's not really a situation. It's it's more. Um, it's more like realities or, or um, I'm not sure, but it's not really a situation. Um, gotcha. It's plural. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, that, thanks very much for those comments, and we'll put something together and we'll correct that. And me ask meeting with WCMRC, and um, thanks, Councillor Shukin, for um, offering, to, or maybe didn't offering, agreeing to help me <laughs> draft that uh, new paragraph there too to add in. Thanks so much. Thanks, everybody. And we're also going to ask uh, WCMRC to come back to uh, uh, this committee or council. For Certainly. I think we're um, scheduling now to meet WCMRC in June. Is it, uh, if I could ask you the, yes. That's with me ask. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So then after that, we'll, we'll invite them to come back to you. That's Michael right. Lowry. Certainly. And it's also representative mask, it's not the entire committee. And I hope I'll have something good to report uh, after we meet with WCMRC. <coughs> So the next item I had on the agenda was simply one about um, some work that's going on or we understand may, may be coming up at um, CRD or if it does, I expect it will come up at some point. Last, in October 2021, the provincial government set a target that distances traveled in light duty vehicles would be reduced by 25% by 2030 compared to 2020. Now this isn't a big item for a chosen per se because a lot of our people will be traveling by vehicles from homes into town. But it is an issue when we, we have a vote at the CRD about what's going on there. And the idea is that, uh, or I would hope that we might, I just wanted to raise it as a topic when it comes up at the CRD, um, that we be supportive of the CRD doing what it can to meet the province's targets. Um, the kind of thing that would, would that I would see happening, it was not just the other day that the Blink Rapid bus system was put in place, and that's taking people from the western communities to town as fast as you can go currently. Um, likely what will happen next in terms of that, in terms of pro proposals, would be that they, there be an additional lane all the way in from the western communities all the way to town, not just intermittent. Uh, extra lane. And when that happens, things will be much um, more uptake in terms of, the, of travel to town by transit. And furthermore, just expanding the bus fleet so there are more trips that can be made. At any rate, I was just looking for the Environment Committee to say, yeah, that seems like a good idea. We'd support that target at the CRD level. Councillor Shukin. Okay, so are light duty vehicles where the focus of the target is? Yeah. There are buses as well? I uh, know, light duty vehicles. Light duty vehicles. So we're getting people out of their vehicles into onto a on bus potentially um, heading into oh, town. Oh, I see. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. And it's a provincial target. So it's just an, they're trying to driving ahead, trying to get us to do things. And, yeah. and I'm yeah. saying, hey, let's agree with that. Okay. Light duty vehicles, as in cars. Thank you. Yep. I might just add to say that, of course, when 
the mayor or each of us attend a CRD meeting or, or whatever, we go with an open mind. It's just the idea that if we provide some support to, uh, offering to each of us when the issues come up that it's fair enough to uh, say, well, that's what we're thinking at the moment until you get to the meeting and find out something new or different that might, might change your mind. I don't know if we need a motion for this or if it's just fine to go ahead if we're okay, if people are generally okay. It was more to bring the issue up so people knew about it. Fair enough? Great. So the, the um, I forgot to mention that this is Earth Week. Um, and um, that's kind of a, it's both, is it Volunteer Day and Earth Week? I'm not sure. <laughs> volunteer Week. Volunteer Week and Earth, Earth Week. And Earth Day is uh, Saturday coming up. Well, May is Invasive Species Action Month, um, declared by the province of British Columbia. And um, having learned about that through the CRISP, the um, Invasive Species Group that I'm sitting on for council, I got an email telling us about these various activities that we could uh, take on this month um, to talk about uh, pet owners don't bring your rabbits out to Machosin. Um, the following week is about gardeners and the kind of things that you have in your garden and whether or not some of those um, non-native plants could be removed, etc. And I wondered if the um, Environment Committee would be open to asking staff to uh, post some of these uh, materials from the toolkit on our website. And um, we can also, there's also some template press releases we could put out. Uh, one I was really interested in, number one, the first week was about rabbits. Uh, but if people are okay with following through with this, we'd like to do that. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed reading this. I was I was curious as to what you were actually asking, if you're asking for all of this people on the website, or if you might actually, for week one, two, and three, yourself, pull something, as the chair, pull something else specific to my chosen for those weeks, because I think that, especially with the rabbits, we do need the broader community. We need a, a media, yeah. like, please don't drop your rabbits here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was hoping to do. And so I've talked to staff and they're open to doing it um, in terms of putting things together. And um, as I said, because we have the templates, it's relatively straightforward. Um, so this is in line with Earth Day, correct? Okay, because so in the past we've had volunteers um, doing broom bio blitz. It's, that's been a really common one when Council Milne was here with us. Uh, another one that I know Kathy um, Atherton has done for years in July when the Tansy Ragwort is in full bloom, um, that uh, council and the um, community have rallied around to pull the, the dastardly weed away and, and deal with it. But uh, I was wondering if we were doing anything specific to, to Earth Day. I know there's a few of us gathering uh, in conjunction with some of the uh, Lanker councillors to do some some earthy stuff in uh, Willing Park, which is right on our border as well. So this is good to see that we're doing something too. Yeah, I hadn't, um, I'm just learning of course about the different events that are going on, but a broom blitz and a tansy rag work blitz sound like a good idea. So I'll talk to Kathy and, mm -hmm. and um, about the tansy rag work. And do you recall who organized the broom blitz offhand? I believe that it was probably Council Milne and, um, and McKinnon we're doing that. I, I don't know who headed it up. Yeah. I just remember hearing the reports all the time. Good idea. Oh, there's a hand waving over there. Yeah, we did the room, bash, the room bashing with Councillor Mill. Right. Yeah. Wasn't there a contest one year? We've tried lots of different okay. strategies. Yeah, so. Yeah, we pull their room and bring it here. And yeah. yeah, the mayor's just reminding me, we can't hear you because you're not at the microphone. But could I just repeat? Sure. Um, a fire chief um, Dunlop has explained that um, we've been the fire department's been involved in broom bashes in the past, and uh, more the mill. I guess it started it out. So we'll, we'll let's look forward. I'll talk to fire chief, and we'll um, see what we can do a little bit later. This came to me particularly from the um, you know the central command, I guess, at the CRD around invasive species, and I just thought it was kind of a fun idea and was applicable to us. So sort of why not? Yeah. Um, I, if it counts great, if you don't mind, I, we'll just mention really quickly that we are going to be involved at an event at Willing Park with our colleagues from Langford Council, and they've welcomed us to be uh, part of a tree planting. Uh, I think there's two sets of tree planting and then um, invasive species removal, 
And the, um, the interesting thing about William Park is um, Bilson Creek, thank you very much, runs through William Park. So we thought it was a great opportunity to partner up with our great council colleagues in Langford, do something for Bilson Creek as well. So there we go. Super, thanks for that. And two to four, I think. Yes. Uh, 10 to 1, I believe. And then we have another. That's right, we changed the time. That's right. Okay, 10 to 1. Thank you. That's okay. Saturday, right? Saturday. Yes, exactly. Okay, great. The other thing that I was. Um, Councilor Shuk and I talked just briefly beforehand to mention to people kind of a report back from the AVIC, uh, that's the Association of Vancouver Island and Coastal Communities uh, meetings that happened last weekend. And do you want me to proceed, Councilor Shukin, and or do, would Go you ahead. like to Go dig ahead. in? Yeah. Well, there were two resolutions that went forward. One was on uh, old growth forest, and the other was on anchorages. And um, Maybe I can, I'll mention the Anchorage one first and then you can give us a play-by-play -play on the forest one. So the Anchorage one, um, that was to reduce anchorages um, um, in our area. I don't have the resolution directly in front of me, but the notion um, went forward, it was well supported and was packaged with a number of resolutions together and the whole block was voted on and approved. And we had support from, I know particularly from North Cowich and from the Islands Trust, but I assume there were others as well, the executive community who were supporting it. So that was great news. And just another word of thanks to Alison LeDuc who worked so hard on it and me ask, and then Beth Bacon who brought the issue forward. But to Alice in particular, thank you for all your work on that. And thanks to Councillor Shuker for bringing it forward there. The old growth uh, resolution was a bit um, more complicated. Yeah, and I, I also want to pass on thanks to Alison for um, craft, helping me craft a statement that I was to read on the anchorages. And I, uh, I, again, as I learn more and more about the issue, I, you realize there's a uh, change that's needed there as well. Interestingly, there was an official from the Chamber of Shipping there who did reach out or said she was going to reach out. Um, I'll follow up with her. Um, so so the, um, the old growth issue came up on Saturday during the second round of resolutions. And I calmly walked to the mic and said, Madam Chair, I wish to uh, make an amendment to the amendment. And I was like, what? Anyways, there was the, the resolution committee had proposed an amendment to our resolution, which the simple action of the resolution, I wish I could figure out what the final action statement is. There a word for that, but like, be it resolved that. Anyways, the final yeah. action was, was really a simple one, and it was essentially that um, we call on the provincial government to halt all logging of old growth for us immediately, essentially. So it was, it was pretty. It's pretty firm, pretty specific, and pretty direct. And, and so the amendment was basically that the committee was asking that the provincial government work with local communities uh, as the old growth review implementation got underway. So the amendment I made was local communities and First Nations. So that went ahead. But what we found is there were, I don't know, seven or eight speakers collectively. And so it was one of the more debated resolutions of the, of the convention. But yeah, there were a number of con speakers and they tended to be, as you might expect, from resource-based communities. So some were pointing out the impacts that this might have with community forests and the local revenue that they might uh, lose. Um, there were two representatives from indigenous communities who spoke against the, the halt to logging. Uh, and they did some quite forceful terms, and, and yeah, there, there was something. I, yeah, very much. You had to listen and respect the um, where they were coming from in terms of their communities and what logging meant to them. But it was interesting once they began to articulate that. I think they brought uh, took away a lot of support that I think the resolution had with me. People were not not so much shying away from it, but rethinking about some of the implications of it. So. So at the end of the day, the, what passed was the commitment to work with local governments and First Nations on to, while the implementation of the old growth review was underway. So there we go. It was an interesting experience. Well, and a good result too. In, in, I, I in think fact. It was, 
uh, Mayor Little. Yeah, um, I just want to say that Councillor Shukin was is being a bit modest. Uh, he actually performed exceedingly well uh, for for Council. Um, Councillor Donaldson and I were waiting in the wings to support him, but it was really nice to see other um, other communities throughout BC stand up and and speak to this. I think there was a little bit of misinformation um, on on the per people that were that were, there was at least one speaker in terms of of um, quoting facts about the old growth forest and the biodiversity and equating that to second growth for us, so that was um, unfortunate and um, actually I would say that it was the most hotly debated resolution was resolution 15 and then we were all, the three of us were charged, all charged for the uh, debate for the next day which was yeah. resolution 30 <laughs> which was the Anchorage and um, and then they passed it as a block. So the three of us sort of, it was a bit anticlimactic, <laughs> I gotta say. Uh, but uh, anyways, I, uh, congratulations to Councilor Shukin and thank you to Council Donaldson for also supporting this as well. It was, it was well done. We will know better next year. Mm -hmm. Well, so. actually not even next year. Uh, UBCM is yes. coming up in September. Well, thanks all. That's a, nice to hear the story. Thanks for sharing tonight. Um, so my, just a last mention, and really it's all on the same theme, but this is Earth Week, and there's an event on uh, Wednesday, this Wednesday at 7 p.m. at St. Mary's Church. St. Mary's Church and Cairo PC are putting on something, and it sort of fits with our theme, uh, what does an old growth ecosystem have to do with us? And um, um, Dr. Andy McKinnon will be speaking, and TJ Watt, both um, the chosen uh, folks, so it'll be kind of fun. Um, Andy will be talking about uh, old growth ecosystems and TJ Watt will be talking about um, all these photographs and some other aspects of uh, saving old growth trees in British Columbia. So I think it'll be a fun evening. All are welcome. That wraps up my update. Are there any questions or other things that people would like to touch on? Okay with that? Um, in terms of the remaining part of the agenda, I think just a motion to adjourn would be in order. Uh, Councilor Dawson, thank you. And Councilor Epp, thank you. So, um, all in favor? Carried. Thanks so much. Thanks everybody for being here.